Well, it has something to do with how much of each level you have in your wardrobe. But most of the wardrobe is going to be second level. That's kind of everyday stuff. Most wools, most sweaters, most knits, most shoes. Not too rustic and not too fancy or refined. Now, that's fabrics. Jewelry goes into that. It's glittery, shiny. That's first level. Uh, rustic, chunky. That's third level. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so if you have a second level garment, I'd say this is second level. It's wool, wool jersey. If you have a second level garment, then you wear second level accessories and shoes. Does that make sense? It's really hard to do third level gar uh, fabrics and first level jewelry. That's hard to do. <laughs> Some people do it. If they're really rebellious, they do that. And it's kind of their personality, and that's kind of fun. But most of us really need to pretty much stay into the, into the level. So that's level of refinement. Then you want related character. Oh, this is fun. Every body person has a story, and most pieces of clothes have stories. If there's a print, it tells a story. Is it a print of flowers and is it sweet and is it French and English? Or is it a print of tropical flowers that are kind of exotic and unusual? Uh, is it a leopard print or cats or Mickey Mouses? You know, every print has a story. Now, if you don't have a lot of money or to invest or want to invest a lot of money into a wardrobe, then you don't get things with, that tell a story, like a print. You get basics, which are simple, like this. It doesn't tell a story. I have to put a story to it with some earrings or with some shoes. So if you want to not spend a lot of money, you use basics. That's another topic. We'll talk about that maybe later, but not now. But this is a, a very simple, you can bring character to this. But if I had on a Western shirt, do you know what a Western shirt looks like with those little point things and maybe some little fringes here? Right. <clears throat> what could I wear at the bottom? I could wear jeans, right? I could wear a Levi skirt, that'd be cute. I could wear cowboy boots, that'd be terrific. But to put on a, a Western shirt with little fancy heeled shoes and glittery little earrings, that's not going to make any sense. Because we have one story going on in the earrings, another story going on in the shirt, and another story going on in the, in the shoes. Sometimes I see people walking down the street and they've got English prints fighting with animal jungle uh, sandals, fighting with French fancy earrings. I mean, we've got a war going on. <laughs> and that poor deer doesn't have a clue. She just likes all of them. So what you have to do is see what the character is and make sure that you don't have any battles going on. OK? So that's related character. Then we have related line. But right now, I want Debbie to come back up with a Okay, here we have a color that absolutely makes her look like peaches and cream. I mean, she's so good, we want to go yum yum. <laughs> so this, this works as far as color. So always when you get dressed and you stand in front of the mirror, you think, okay, what works, what doesn't work? When you go into a store and you're trying on clothes, say, okay, what do I love about it? What don't I like about it? And start taking notes. Make a design portfolio, a notebook of what works for you. You know, I love that color. I don't like that color. I love this cut. I don't like that one. All right, so how often do you wear this cut of jacket? Not very often. OK. How do you feel in this? I'm kind of dressed up for me. This would be kind of yeah, dressed up. Yeah, it is kind of dressed up. Yeah. And it's cute. And yet it's still second level. It's not first level. It's second level because it's linen. Mm -hmm. And um, 
it's got a cute cut. The only thing is it doesn't really fit her. Now, for Debbie to get a size that goes around her hip, you see, she's a triangle, and the, and the manufacturers do not manufacture for triangles. They manufacture for, for a rectangle. So if whatever it is here, it's up here. Well, that's way too big for Deb. Okay, so she's a petite. She's short. She needs this much less jacket. Suddenly, the pocket's where it belongs. Mm -hmm. The belt, the button is where it belongs. And she's got a jacket on that fits her. Now let's do this again. See, everything's down, and she's not. She's up. The points of the collars are better for her. There we go. So she needs a petite cut. It's not because her body is necessarily petite. It's just that that's the way clothes are manufactured in the United States or whatever country, it doesn't matter. But manufacturers have standards, and you have to learn what those manufacturing standards are and what your body is and where the differences are and how to make the changes. So unless you do a little short jacket, you're going to have to do a petite jacket and get it a larger size and then take in the back mm -hmm. of, of the jacket. Now, we talked. Uh, before about scale of uh, facial features in the last uh, episode that I spoke about and scale of bone structure. So your features are dainty. Look at the dainty features, her mouth and her nose. She has huge eyes. <laughs> so because of her large eyes, she can probably stretch the scale of this plaid this big because it's kind of fun. But actually, she's got di tiny, dainty features and would also look very good in little, tiny plaids and checks. How many little, tiny checks do you have and little plaids? Very few. Except I saw two out there, little shirts. Yes, that's true. I that's true. Uh -huh. plaids, right? you know, we we, we <laughs> often don't really pay attention to what we have. But if you really go and, and look, I bet you have any number of little, uh -huh, right? <laughs> now that I think about <laughs> yeah, it, right? Yeah, that I think about it, right? <laughs> so that's because of your, your dainty features. I ask you to bring some favorite things. Ah, here's a wonderful clue for you. If you can get your favorite things, thanks. Anytime you really think about something that are favorites and wonderful, we give, it gives us a picture of you and your personality. Now. Talk to me about this. What do you love about that? I love this. This is so special to me. I love the color and all the detail. And it's just precious. I can stand and look at this for hours. I just love it. All right, now. Shiny. And <laughs> delightful mm -hmm. and fun and young and sweet and cute. And look at the shapes. We are always drawn to what is like us. Uh, look at the, the little, you know, the little heart shape faces, the cute little mouth here, um, the coloring. It is absolutely adorable. Look at the heart here in her face. I mean, is this just the cutest thing? It looks just like her. It is so cute. I have, I've got to tell you this story. I have a friend who is, has a wonderful sense of self. She is beautiful. Now, she's beautiful because she knows how to dress her body. She knows how to do her makeup. She knows that she's God's gift and she has understand, understands God's point of view. We were in a store and she saw a little pin in the, in the case and it was the shape of the cutest little pig you've ever seen. <laughs> and she went, oh, look at that darling pin. It looks just like me. <laughs> and she was right. She has small dainty eyes that kind of turn up. She has this little pug nose, a little tiny mouth, and she very pink skin and a very full face. She looks like that little pig. It's so <laughs> cute. And because she is comfortable with that, we go, wow, what a delight. We never 
you would never see her and say, oh, she looks like Pig. <laughs> you know? She just looks beautiful and delightful, but she knows herself, and she accepts that, and she honors it. So this little heart-shaped face, you see, it's all over in this little cute thing. All right, thanks. <laughs> When I was an interior designer years ago, it would take me a long time to find things that people liked. And finally, I got, I figured it out. I went, wait a minute. Their body shapes and their furniture, the prints they like, and their faces. And I started putting that together, and by golly, it works. I can pull for a house in very short time and showing furniture in a very short time because I just look at the body. So look at your body, look at your favorite clothes, look at your favorite anything and that will tell you about yourself. Have your husband do the same thing, have your wife do the same thing, you men that are out there. And then you'll, you'll have an idea of why people like something. And we need to be in our environment. We see God puts every creature that was created into its natural environment and we are no different. We have a natural environment. And the more we understand that and place ourselves in that natural environment, the more at home and at ease we are with ourselves. It's just a very simple sort of balance here. The more you understand, the more you place yourself in what's native and natural to you, the better you feel, just like the animals. In the animal kingdom, God doesn't make mistakes. Debbie's going to come back again, and she's wearing a dressy outfit. Talk to me about it. This I bought for my husband's um, reunion in San Francisco, a okay. nighttime deal. Not nighttime deal. Yeah. Now notice, always when you evaluate what you're doing, evaluate what's on you, evaluate what you like and what works. No, what did you like about this? Um, I guess the design, uh -huh. the, the pretty flowers. Notice this pretty, dainty design that's very reminiscent of her face. Very pretty. The only comment, I, and let's look at the proportions. It's got this little short top. We see, because light, our eye always goes to lightness, we see up here at the top, not down at the bottom. If you're short-legged like Debbie, and I, many people are, I'd say probably more, the people that I see have short legs relative to their bodies than long. But anyway, we look better with all the detail up here, not down there, so, unless it's down on the ground. So, one thing, I, comment I would make though here, again, it's just a little short, a little long, it needs to be shortened just a little. What do we see first? Do we see the outfit or do we see Debbie? I see the outfit because it's so high a contrast between black and white. It's brighter white than the whites of her eyes. So anytime you want to wear white, you have to be very well rested. Wear just a little bit of it here, and if, Debbie, you want to wear white, do it in a, uh, a fabric that we, is not quite so opaque, that's a little bit more sheer, like a lightweight cotton would be uh, better for a white. Uh, but I see this contrast. now. Look in the mirror when you get home and look at your contrast. Do you have light dark? Or like Debbie, she's light and relatively light, sort of medium light, and sort of medium eye blue eyes. So she does not have naturally a lot of contrast. And there, therefore, wearing this outfit, we see it before we see her. Even though it fits her, the design is absolutely wonderful for her. What she has to do if she wants to make this work, she's going to have to intensify her makeup, darken her brows, put on bigger earrings. She's going to have to translate herself to get the dramatic level of her outfit. Doesn't mean you can't. You know, it's a party. It was in San Francisco. It was your husband's night. Mm -hmm. she, why not? But for every day, no black and white. Okay. Because, look at her eyes and her teeth, she's ivory, black and ivory, beautiful. But it's just not quite so strong. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it's not that it's not right, it just takes more work to make it fit you. 
Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I want to, want to have you turn around. Can you see that there's a little wrinkle right here? Right there. It doesn't go down over Debbie's hip, which is because of the manufacturing that doesn't manufacture for her body shape. Anytime there's a, a lump or a wrinkle there in the fabric, that means it wants to go away. The fabric, so there are two things to do about this. You can either open up this seam and make a little opening V, like here in the front. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. All right. Or you do what I call a horizontal dart. You just have an alterations person take that out. And can you see that that would be smoother? Mm -hmm. And it fits her body. And the alterations person might say, but we don't do that. And then you say, well, but I would like to. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to be creative here. <laughs> and then you do it. And then they'll say, oh, but it's, it makes it crooked down here. And you say, I know. <laughs> but you know, I love diagonals. I love the diagonals on my body. I'm just all curved. And so I just would like it if you wouldn't mind. And so they do it. And then you try it on. And they go, oh, that really looks nice. You say, oh, thank you so much. I know it. <laughs> so you have to art direct your alterations per people. You need to, or yourself, you need to know how to describe what to do. I encourage anyone who's going to sew to get a body a form. You can go on the internet and go under dress form, and you, there are ways to get dress forms. And you get one, and you get one that is your body except when you're pregnant. <laughs> and then you can get your clothes to really fit your body. But you have to like your body. You know, it's, and you like your body a lot better if your clothes fit. Mm -hmm. And you show your body. It's like, OK, there we go. Thank you very much. OK, let's say you have a jacket with a lapel. That's what this thing is here, lapel. And then you want to wear a blouse under that jacket. The blouse has to either relate to the same line, related line, of the lapel, but it fits over. That's A. Relate to part of the lapel, as in B. It's not quite as wonderful, but can be. It's OK. Or C, not have a collar at all and just be a little scoop or a tank top that relates to the points of that lapel. So that's related line. You don't have any one line fighting with another. Now, here's another uh, possibility that doesn't work. And you see this all the time. Here's the collar, the lapel, and then there's a blouse with another shape to it. And we don't know whether to look at the round shape or the straight shape, the round shape or the straight shape. And so this poor person is talking, and you're going back and forth between those two lines. Now, you might not know consciously that that's what's going on, but intuitively in your heart, it absolutely is going on. And we cannot hear the person as well. We don't trust the words as much. It's amazing. Amazing. Now, there's almost always a way to do anything if you understand art and art principles. So, if there's a very dark suit, so black navy or black, so you really don't see the line as easily as you would in a beige suit. Then you could put on a line that doesn't relate in a bright light color, and you'll see just that bright light color. So a white collar on a black suit. You might be able to get away with unrelated line. You want to be careful with some this, this whole line and character thing. If you're wearing a print, and, and you have a very sort of generously, deliciously rounded 
tush, right? Full. Be really careful about having rounded flowers <laughs> right there. <laughs> Because when you're walking down the street and being seen from the back, it's a different rhythm than you might want. So all I'm saying is just be aware that, that though, though there would be a relationship in those lines, it might not be what you want to be dominant. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, we have to, if, if you don't have a three-way mirror, not three, yeah, you know, a three-fold mirror, Get one. Uh, it doesn't have to be real glass. You can go to uh, a, a thrift store, get a, a, a plastic mirror, put it on for 50 cents, put it on the door, and then have another one on the wall so when you move the door you can see yourself in the back. Whatever you do, it takes, do it. You need a full-length mirror. We, it, this is the truth that, that we need to know in order to create yourself as a work of art. But you can't do it from a mirror from here. It just doesn't work. You see, we all, we all have instincts. We all know what makes us feel good. But we forget to pay attention. So I'm asking you to pay attention. Think about it. Uh, if you don't know, stand in the front of the mirror and pray, because God does. You know, if you are, have a question about whether you should wear something or not, ask the Lord. Train that listening ear because the Lord is always there to help you with these decisions. And nothing pleases the Lord, I'm quite sure. Nothing pleases God more than having His dear, treasured one feel good about herself. That's a gift back to the Lord. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carla, for sharing your inspirational message of hope and beauty. As we learn to see ourselves from God's point of view, we begin to truly appreciate our physical bodies. After all, your body is a gift that was impeccably designed by a magnificent Creator for His glory, pleasure, and purpose. This week in your reading, you will take a personal inventory to see how well you're progressing in the PRISM Weight Loss Program. As the second phase draws to a close, you must evaluate whether or not you have truly developed positive attitudes and have incorporated right actions into your life. This personal inventory will most likely be a source of encouragement, but it will also reveal which areas remain a challenge. Your Week 11 homework will challenge you to run the good race to the finish. You'll be asked to allow hope and expectation to fuel your determination. You will begin to know and understand that you have been set free to remain free from past eating behaviors. You will learn that food is only an energy source, not a reflection of your body image. You will be directed to energize the true you with proper nutrition and exercise and to maintain a positive attitude toward exercise. This week's reading will also remind you that transformation to the true you encompasses all areas of life, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. This process of transformation is an effort that must be taken one day at a time. Week 11 is a good time to discuss as a class or with your accountability partner how each of you can begin an exercise routine if you have not done so already. Some PRISM groups have arranged their schedules in order to start walking together after class. Exercise is a key component in the lifestyle of the true you and its benefits cannot be overstated. Exercise will help build lean tissue, burn calories, promote wellness, and give energy. We often think we must have a structured, complicated exercise program. But according to Johns Hopkins University, overweight women who simply started walking, gardening, or generally being more active for about 30 minutes a day lost as much weight as another group of women in the study who did step aerobics three times a week. 
Did you realize that taking a walk for as little as 10 to 20 minutes each day will bring positive results? That's incredible! Your initial goal is to incorporate some kind of movement each day into your new lifestyle. What works for you? Perhaps walking the dog, gardening, or water aerobics would fit into your schedule nicely. Maybe you would rather play some fun, upbeat music and dance around the house as you clean. Others may enjoy team sports, biking, or going to the playground and playing tag with your children. Eventually, you may actually enjoy going to a health club to take advantage of the varied programs, weight training, exercise equipment, and other amenities they offer. Start slow and build on your progress each week. You will be amazed at how much better you feel physically and emotionally. Again, the point is not to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, unless of course you want to, but rather it is to gain the health and well-being that only physical movement can bring. If you need help keeping the commitment to exercise, ask your accountability partner or someone in your group for their prayer support and become accountable to them. You will soon see how easy and enjoyable it is to put more physical activity into your daily routine. In closing, I leave you with encouragement from the scriptures found in Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another, and forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. May God walk with you in grace as you clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, and most of all, love in the week to come.